So, you want your keyboard to sound good, maybe even fuck. Well, howdy hey, I'm Hippio Tech, and these are some- Oh! Oh no! Please god, anything but that! Oh my god. Anyways, I've been making keyboard videos for two years now, so I'm gonna show you how to make your keyboard sound good. Now, you might have a gaming keyboard, you might have an incredibly nice keyboard, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you some quirky little examples. Yeah, that's sand you're saying on your screen. Essentially, I'm gonna walk you through my top five ways to make a keyboard sound better. Now, these are in no particular order, but I have saved the best for last. I'll also tell you what not to do. <laughs> Don't do that. Here's some rules. They must be relatively affordable and doable by basically anyone. And most importantly, I need to have done them before. Now, I'm going back into the archives to show you some of my favorite mods I've ever done and some of the best keyboards I've ever built. So you too can thaw. And I know what you're thinking, you're probably thinking, Hippio, I don't even own a keyboard or my keyboard already sounds good. Well, trust me, there's gonna be some interesting stuff. I filled keyboards with pillow foam. Do you think I'm not unhinged? Speaking of unhinged, I'm incredibly unhinged that 79% of you aren't subscribed, but I'm incredibly happy that we hit 500K. Thank you so much, oh my God. Now, first things first, if you're a veteran of the Hippio Tech channel, you probably know what's going on here. But let me explain some of my methodology. The tape mod is literally putting tape on the back of your keyboard's PCB so that it sounds more poppy or thawky. You're probably thinking, Hippio, you're ridiculous. Why would you ever put tape on your keyboard? Well, okay, I'll show you a before and after. The only differences in any of those clips was tape on the back of a PCB. That's it. Now, typically, to do this, I use painter's tape. However, if your keyboard has a battery, you should not use painter's tape. Use electric tape, as painter's tape could be a fire hazard. If you're trying this at home to make your keyboard sound better, then generally you take a couple thin layers of tape and put it on the back of your PCB. Usually, I go with two to three layers. Now wait, pay attention. This is the most important step. You need to kind of like, I'm, I'm doing a motion with my hands here and you can't see this, I'm not very smart. Just like pinch down the tape so that you get rid of all the air bubbles, there you go. Here's what I really like about this mod. It's super easy, incredibly cheap, like $3, and will make your keyboard sound better. Just objectively, it'll sound better. Here's what I don't like. It could leave a residue on the back of your keyboard, but overall, very clean. Now, this is a mod called the Hippio mod because I invented it. I use press and seal and I, wait, I, I use press and seal, that's yeah. I kind of forgot I was notorious for doing this in the past and you know what? I, I'm not gonna apologize, it was a great idea until it wasn't. Now, this requires your keyboard to be bare bones, AKA none of the switches installed, but essentially you wrap your bare bones PCB in a layer of plastic wrap, AKA press and seal. This is, very big brain as it's essentially doing the tape mod, but also like a PE foam mod on the front. Now, if you're watching this and you have no idea why people would even want their keyboards to sound good, first of all, thank you for making it three minutes. Um, second of all, check out some of my other videos like my beginner guides. I'll link one in the top right, maybe. Now, this plastic wrap mod, I only recommend for super budget keyboards that you don't care about breaking as there's a chance that you build up so much static electricity that you zap your PCB. However, if you don't zap it, you have now found that your keyboard sounds significantly poppier. This is like my sleeper hit when I'm working with a budget keyboard as it's also incredibly cheap at roughly three to $7 for a thing of press and seal, or you can steal some from your kitchen cabinet. However, I don't necessarily recommend this one as much as I recommend any of the other ones in this video simply because of the static electricity vibe. I personally have never zapped a PCB, but I've heard others talk about how it could be an issue. Also some other cons, if your board isn't hot swap, this isn't really gonna work very easily. But with a hot swap board, you just press the switches in through the press and seal and it works just as well. Now I didn't have a before and after of just like press and seal and not press and seal, but you're gonna have to believe me on this one. It makes them sound better. Now, if you're just getting into the hobby of keyboards, uh, first of all, welcome, howdy, hey. And second of all, you might be hearing lube thrown around like literally everywhere, lube this, lube that. We aren't a bunch of dirty uh, people sometimes, some of us, but lube makes your switches sound better. Don't believe me? Listen to this. Some switches come factory lubed and you really don't actually need to do anything with them, but some come quite dry. 
and some of those factory lube switches could actually still benefit from a little bit of lube, a little bit of TLC, we all could. Now, lubing is a process that takes a little bit of time, but you really only have to do it once for your keyboard, and then it's over with. As you heard, it makes your switches sound better, and I can't really show you, but it also makes them smoother. What I can show you though is how to lube them. Now, I'll have everything linked down below, but first, you need some type of lube. I personally use Crytox 205 Grade Zero, but you could use a couple different loops. You also need a switch opener, a stem holder, and some super lube oil for spring lubing. We'll get to that in a second. Now you're probably thinking, Hippio, I was trying to figure out how to make my keyboard sound thawky. What is this? Now we're getting into lubing switches? Well, trust me, this is actually the biggest secret of the whole video. I sound like a, one of those little ads, but I'm like, if just for this one quick trick, you can make your keyboard sound good. <laughs> Anyways, for bag lubing, you put 10 drops of super lube oil in a bag, then you shake your springs. That's all you do for your springs. For lubing switches, you want a light layer of lube on your brush. I use a lube palette from Kinetic Labs. And then you just put three strokes on each slider of your switch that you've previously opened and then go around the world very gently around the world so gentle oh god i actually have no idea why that clip is red and shaking i was using old footage but there you go it's red and shaking then you place your spring on your little open switch that you get a light layer of lube on your brush and you lube the stem lube all the high contact points essentially what this is doing is it's making it smoother and adding a little bit of lube to dampen everything if you're lubing tactiles don't lube the legs by the way uh, unless you want those to be less tactile now there's great lubing tutorials out there this was just a quick one but there you go if you've got lubed switches then you've got a really good foundation for any keyboard if you're too lazy to lube there are lubing services out there but i can't inherently recommend one of them as uh i use my friend toby now they won't make your keyboard prettier but they will make your keyboard sound better. And that's pretty good. Now you remember earlier in the video where I told you what you shouldn't do? Oh no. This is gonna have a lot of that. Now I'm the guy that put Play-Doh, yeah, Play-Doh, in a keyboard. I'm that guy, it was dumb and I did it and it was dumb. In case you're wondering, video in the top right, it dries up, but it's kind of cool. I'm also the guy that puts pillow foam in a keyboard. And right about now you're thinking, why? Why Hippio? Well, actually, it's dampening. Dampening is very important. And yeah, it was a real pillow. There you go, look at it. I'm squishing. This is my opinion, but I think dampening usually makes a keyboard sound better. Dampening comes in many forms, like included foams with your keyboard, which some keyboards come with a lot of included foams, like the Zoom 65, or some DIY methods, like my favorite, the Kill Mat. This is really, really good if you don't have a lot of space to dampen your board. It's an automotive dampener. Or some even more fun, cheaper methods like silicone pours. Yeah, like, like silicone. That works best for tray mount style keyboards, like some cheaper budget keyboards. Heck, a lot of keyboard companies nowadays are making their own silicone weights, but you could make your own too. Oh, <laughs> oh, and kinetic sand. <laughs> I got a whole video on it, but here's a before and after. But essentially, put some type of foam in your keyboard and it'll make it sound better. Maybe not sand though. The the hell am I now when I say, I wanna make my keyboard sound better, thawky even. Probably the last thing that comes to mind is keycaps. But as you've learned with this video, a keyboard is the sum of all of its parts. One specific thing isn't gonna be that silver bullet, but doing all of these things might help. Now, if you want your keyboard to sound a bit deeper, you generally want a thicker PBT style keycap. If you want it to sound a little bit clackier, you generally want a thicker ABS style keycap. If you want something in the middle, then you want a thick, tall keycap like MT3 profile. I'm simplifying everything a lot here, but you know. Now I'm incredibly biased, so I personally recommend getting Polycaps Hippo, which is a PBT keycap set that I make and sell, link down below. But there's a lot of keycap sets out there, and honestly, as long as you get something that's thick PBT, it's probably gonna make your keyboard sound better than those really cheap thin ABS gamer keycaps. There's also fun novelty style keycaps like metal keycaps, check out my video on that, although they're like 400 plus dollars, so maybe, maybe don't. And other types of fun keycaps like ceramic that aren't quite available, but I'll link them down below. Having a good keycap really just adds to having good switches and a good board. I didn't mention keyboards at all, but I do have a what keyboard should you buy video. You can check that out. And also here's a side by side. So yeah. Everything that you put in a keyboard has the ability to change its sound, and if you follow most of these steps, then you'll probably have a keyboard that sounds decently good. 
Or, uh, if you didn't have a keyboard to begin with, you probably have a lot of confusion. But while I still have you confused, I guess, uh, make sure you leave a comment and hit the subscribe button or whatever. Anyways, if you stayed till the end, howdy hey.